Thank you for listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. The opinions of hosts and guests do not necessarily reflect the opinion of this network. You are listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, the best in paranormal talk only on Paranormal Experience Radio. Broadcasting live, live, live out of Birmingham, Alabama. This is Ghost Talk with 187 PI. Sit back and prepare yourselves for an adventure into the paranormal world with host Shelly Robertson and 187 PI research team. Ghost Talk is broadcasting live from Ohio's most haunted jail. Learn about their ongoing research at the jail and abroad, investigation techniques, and their personal encounters. Here is your host of Ghost Talk and 187 PI founder, Shelly Robertson. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Ghost Talk Radio. With me is your host, Shelley Robertson. Tonight, I have a very interesting show planned for you. I will be discussing haunted schools and universities. And I would like to invite all my listening friends out there to join me in chat at wbhm-db.com, where you can join in on the conversation or ask me any questions you might have. So, um, there are so darn many haunted schools and universities, not only in the United States, but in the entire world. So, tonight we're going to hit on a good handful of them, and so we're just going to dive right in. And I do want to say this. A lot of these places are still operating as some sort of something, either... It's, it's changed hands, become a different business. It's, it's, it's owned by somebody. So, um, please, if you want to visit these haunted locations, get permission from the property owners. Most of them can be found online even. So just look up the name of, of the place I talk about, and it'll, you can go to their website. Find out operating hours and such. Okay, so this first one, um, <coughs> it's called... Park Road Elementary, and it is located in Florissant, Missouri. Now, the land that the elementary school stands on, it used to be home to the Leaf Brown Cemetery, and it was in the 1950s that Missouri ordered the cemetery to be moved. All the bodies were dug up and placed in a new area to make room for new construction of a neighborhood and, of course, the school. Now, not everyone knows, or, or, or a lot of you do know, and if you don't know, um, a lot of times the removal of bodies from their final resting place is never a good idea. And it's even worse when the resting place is disturbed. And then, of course, such as this one was, um, all the bodies were dug up and placed in a new area, except for one. One was left behind, and that is what uh, people think causes this haunting, because it's, I guess, the only way to explain uh, the spirit that seems to remain there, you know, and, and it shows itself to the children in the school from time to time. Many students have claimed to have seen a woman in an emerald green dress with no eyes, okay? Just black black holes where the eyes should be. And some of the students have even said that they were chased down the hall by this ghostly figure. Others have heard this woman weeping in the girls' bathroom. Most of the teachers said that they have encountered screaming after school hours. So, there was uh, just so many kids that claimed to have seen this woman, and they all had the very same description. So, it's become obvious that 
this was no imaginary person that the children, you know, made up. So definitely a haunted location from a grave that was left on the property. Now this next place we're going to go to is Transylvania College. And it's located on the campus of Transylvania University. And this is in Lexington, Kentucky. Now, it's located near a wooded area in Kentucky. And, of course, the name Transylvania, which actually translates to Across the Woods, is a very fitting name for this college. However, like you and I, (laughs) many people, the first things that come to mind when we talk about this is like usually, you know, something dark and sinister like vampires and Dracula, you know. The word Transylvania, that's what it puts into people's minds, right? So it does seem, though, that this college won't disappoint when it comes to having a creepier dark side. It's been rumored that the college had a curse placed upon it by a former professor by the name of Constantine. Now, Constantine, he came to the college in 1819 as a botanist and a zoologist and was deemed a remarkably intelligent man, right? He even found a new species of bat within the Mammoth Cave there in Kentucky, and uh, it's now named after him. Um, Unfortunately, the college eventually found that some of his work seemed too controversial for them, And they threw him out in 1926. It is said that he took his belongings and he walked out and he could be heard chanting a a curse in an ancient or unrecognizable language. Now, just a year after that, a devastating fire broke out and it engulfed the entire main building of the campus. The only thing left from this fire was the possessions that Constantine had left behind. They were virtually untouched, while everything surrounding them were burnt to ashes, right? Then, yet another fire broke out, and it made another devastating claim to part of the campus building in 1969. And it seems as though a student suicide was also blamed on this curse. Um, Many of the sightings that were reported by other students were of um, this man standing within their dorm rooms. But it seems as though when this man, this is apparition, um, once he realized that he'd been noticed, he just vanishes into thin air. Ironically, the school now honors Constantine, his work and his supernatural hold that is still left on the uh, building. And they do this by having a week-long celebration for him one week prior to Halloween. So they celebrate this fella now. And this next place that we're going to visit is called Pocatello, also known as Pokey High School. And it's located in Pocatello, Idaho. The school was constructed in the late spring and summer of 1892, and it cost about 18000 to build. What a bargain, right? This high school is one of the most documented haunted schools to exist due to its 24-hour surveillance camera footage. Now, at night, the cameras have picked up erratic and mysterious light shows, ghostly figures that seem to walk down the hallways, and the sounds of a disembodied piano player. And um, it's, they've also seen uh, ghostly figures in the gym, along with other strange noises and random shadow figures. Now, some of these incidents, they were not experienced just on camera, of course, you know. They were personally experienced by faculty members. Toilets would randomly flush, doors mysteriously open and close, and some have reported either seeing or feeling the presence of an apparition. Now, the former principal had his very own personal encounter while working 
after school hours, many of which were experienced on multiple occasions. One of the most common and disturbing of them all to him, you know, it was um, he heard what he described as someone banging beneath the floor with something like a broom handle, you know, tapping up onto the floor. Now, needless to say, it was quite disturbing to him. And there's been at least six confirmed deaths at this school. One of the deaths was of uh, a young boy who drowned in the pool, and it said that's why the pool was taken out. It is believed that some of the occurrences are from the remaining spirits of the devastating fire that took place in 1914, which also killed six people. The school was rebuilt in the exact same location in 1918, and odd occurrences have been recorded there and reported ever since. (coughs) So, very, very interesting, and... I would like to log on and watch some of their surveillance cameras. That would be quite, quite interesting, just like I do at the jail. Now, this next place we're going to travel to is University of Virginia. And this university has a ton of ghostly stories and encounters to choose from, okay? There's so much going on here. We'll start with the university's library. Um. There was this fella named Dr. Uh, Bennett Wood Green, and he was once a Confederate surgeon, right? And it's said that he still resides, his, his spirit resides alongside his book collection, which was donated after his death in 1913. The original residing place of his book collection was in the Rotunda, And this is also where many people claim to have seen his ghost roaming nearby. Now, when his collection was moved in 1938 to the newly constructed Alderman Library, it is said his ghost followed. Both students and staff report hearing unexplained footsteps and the sense of someone watching them. So I would say that Green is still watching over his books to make sure they're not harmed, even though they're in a different location. There is yet another spirit that haunts this university's library, and it's in a section of what is known as the Garrett Room. This particular section houses yet another donated collection from the Garrett family. They say that it's not the family that remains watching over the book collection. Instead, it is of a ghost of a physician who frequented their home. The original state where the books were located was abandoned after the Civil War for many, many years. However, all the books that were found in the Immaculate Collection were, you know, just in, like, new condition, right? They believe the doctor who dearly admired the book collection in life also took care of them in death. And people say that the ghost of this doctor followed the collection and is still tending to them in the new home within the library, right? Another story at the same university. Like I said, this is a very haunted place. Deep. I found this part of it so so, uh, amazing. So, okay, so... uh, It's about Edgar Allan Poe, okay, in this university. I guess he was deep in debt, and he was unable to pay his bills. So Edgar Allan Poe left the University of Virginia on December 15, 1826, and according to the university's Raven Society, Poe is believed to etched a mysterious message on one of the window panes of his room on the West range before his departure and the etching was it, this is what the etching was it, it it read like this um oh thou timid one do not let thy form slumber within these unhallowed walls for herein lies the ghost of an awful crime so many people think that 
Edgar Allan Poe could also be haunting the halls and his former room. Lastly, there's a place called um, Stiffel at the same university. And it was once used for human dissections and is known to harbor its own disturbing unpleasantness. I think uh, human dissections, that's, that's telling us everything we need to know already. Um, the students were given permission to dissect the bodies of those who died from typhoid fever back in the day. And it's said that the stench of the rotting corpses can still be smelled on occasions when somebody wanders a clue too close to the, the hall where this this room is located. I think that would be yucky. <laughs> I wouldn't want to smell that. <coughs> but anyways, we're going to move on now. And this next place is called Tennessee High School, located in Bristol, Tennessee. And it was built in, in uh, 1939. And it's rumored to have three predominant hauntings. Um, that seemed to only take place within the original part of the building, okay? The first and most well-known of these hauntings comes from the tragedy of a former student by the name of Agnes. And Agnes was killed by an oncoming train while she was on her way back to school. And, you know, after an event. Now... Witnesses have seen her apparition wearing a white dress, both within the school's original corridors and within the TV broadcasting booth that is located in the auditorium. Okay. Now, with her untimely death also comes another much more terrifying ghostly encounter, one that leaves the unfortunate witnesses completely paralyzed in terror and shock. And that is the train that took young Agnes's life has been witnesses by several people on different occasions, busting and roaring through the gym and down the hallway, all the while, you know, making this, this big loud rumbling noise echo through the, um, through the school. And the last ghostly spirit to make themselves known within the school is that of a former athlete who was hit and killed while walking home after a game. His apparition has been seen and makes its appearance during, to others during uh, some of the school's sporting events and such. So quite, quite a lot going on there, too. And this next place we're going to visit is the University of Iowa. Iowa State University was first founded back in 1858 under the name Iowa State College of Agriculture and Mechanic Arts. It later became Iowa State University, or ISU. ISU is well known for being a great school for science, engineering, and agriculture. ISU also has a history of hauntings. And one of the ghosts that people have encountered is believed to be Frederica Shattuck. Shattuck was a major contributor to the university's theater department when she was alive. Her spirit has haunted both the Shattuck Theater and then the newly built Fisher Theater. Students at the university claim to have seen Shattuck's wheelchair move on its own as well as hearing disembodied voices. The farmhouse, now known as the Farmhouse Museum, was built in 1860 and was originally used to house the deans, professors, farmhands, and some of the students of the school. It is said that two of the former residents still roam throughout the building. Edith Curtis, who was the daughter of the dean in 1902, and Esther Wilson, whose husband was once the president of Iowa State. And with that, folks, we'll be back after this short break. You are listening to Ghost Talk Radio on WBHM-DB.
You are listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, the best in paranormal talk, only on Paranormal Experience Radio, broadcasting live out of Birmingham, Alabama. Since 1948, Fate Magazine has brought you reports of the strange and unknown, all of them true. Fate Radio is carrying on that tradition, bringing you the unusual, macabre, strange, and bizarre. Join host Cat Hops Sunday nights from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern on WBHM Digital Broadcast. You are listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, the best in paranormal talk only on Paranormal Experience Radio. Broadcasting live, live, live out of Birmingham, Alabama. Oh, come on. I'm Southern, but... Um, nope. That'll do. Hello, I am Kat Hobson, host of Paranormal Experience here on WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. I enjoy having guests from all areas of the paranormal, from ghosts to ufology to cryptids and beyond. You'll find some of the best researchers in their fields bringing you some great information. Join me on Wednesday nights from 8 to 10 p. Eastern here on WBHM Digital Broadcasting. We are confident that none of our hosts are possessed. Being repossessed a few times, that might be a different story. You are listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, Birmingham, Alabama. Thank you for listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. The time is 23 minutes after the hour. Welcome back to Ghost Talk Radio. With me is your host, Shelly Robertson. And tonight I'm talking about haunted schools and universities. And right before the break, I was talking about the University of Iowa. And there's still some more things going on there. Like, you know, there's people at the at one of the buildings that believe that Edith, who is one of the ghosts, is one of them that's responsible for always opening random curtains throughout the building during the night. And Esther, another ghost, is said to be the one responsible for moving various objects to different locations. One such item was actually the silverware which was located in a completely different area of the building than when it, you know, where it was usually on display, right? Another ghost at Iowa State University is um, Hortense Elizabeth Wind, and she was a former Red Cross nurse during uh, World War I who haunts the Gold Star Hall. Now, within this area of the university, Many people have claimed to feel cold breezes, hear unusual and explainable sounds, and have even seen dark shadows walking down empty corridors. And probably the most disturbing encounter of this school took place in the year 2016 in the Birch Welch Roberts Hall that uh, these two public officers witnessed and reported. Now, as the officers were doing their nightly routine checks throughout the campus. They spotted someone standing on the balcony of the hall. Now, this particular balcony is completely off limits. So the officers, obviously, they yelled up at them to come down. To their surprise and their horror, actually, the figure proceeded to jump straight up into the air and land onto the roof of uh, a building that's two stories above the balcony. And then the officer seen it squeeze its way into an attic window. Okay, so the officers were completely stunned by what they witnessed. And after they quickly recovered, they rushed to the attic where they seen the person enter. 
and to their complete horror, they found a young man hanging from the rafters and found that he had been a missing student that everyone had been looking for for over two weeks. Needless to say, the university was named fifth most haunted campus in the Midwest. So, as you can see, a lot, a lot is going on there, too. This next place we're going to um, go to is called um, El Paso High. And this high school is located, of course, in El Paso, Texas, and has more than just strange noises and shadows that take place in most haunted locations, right? In fact, a few of the things that have been witnessed can be considered downright creepy. There have been uh, multiple witness accounts um, at this location. There is a hallway that's on the fourth floor of the high school that's been closed off to the public for decades. Now, reports state that this hallway is covered in a mist and fog every single day, and there seems to be an unusual sticky, gooey substance dripping from the ceiling. Not only that, at the end of the hallway, there's this staircase that leads to a balcony, which has also been sealed off. Now, this unusual activity is said to have started after a tragic incident that happened over 35 years ago. There was this young girl who was a cheerleader in El Paso High, and she was dating a guy on the football team. And, as you can imagine, he dumped her, all right? You know, that happens when you're in high school. She became distraught and depressed, and they say that uh, she sliced her wrists open and threw herself off the balcony, plunging herself to death, right? Plunging to her death. Well, ever since then, some people claim to have seen the ghostly image of the girl standing on the balcony waving to them. Others say they've witnessed her ghost jumping from the balcony and disappearing before she hit the ground. Um, sounds of sobbing have been heard coming from that hallway. And, you know, even though there's been nobody there. And a few people have spotted a ghostly girl crying in the hallway, on the staircase, in a bathroom. And here is something else that's so, so amazing about El Paso High, right? There was an unknown hidden classroom that was discovered beneath the building and behind a brick wall by some teachers, to which they have not figured out why it had been sealed off yet. Now, this classroom was very small and contained uh, antique desks, old textbooks, and even notebooks containing students' writings. Now, everything was covered in a thick layer of dust, and nobody could explain why this classroom had uh, suddenly been abandoned and everything left in its place, and nobody could explain why the students hadn't returned to take their personal items. So, okay, so... One of the teachers picked up a dusty old notebook that was lying on, open on a desk and, <coughs> excuse me, he was flipping through it and he realized that it was a diary that had belonged to a young girl. She had written pages and pages about her love for this one boy in the school. There were little doodles of hearts, flowers, and tears throughout this notebook. However, the final page in the notebook contained a chilling suicide note. Many unfortunate deaths have occurred here. Another is an, of a, uh, a former football player who died from a broken neck while playing on the field. Many people claim to have seen his ghostly figure running along sidelines in the field. You know, they say he's still out there trying to play football. And if all that isn't creepy enough, there is this trophy case that's just inside the original front entrance of the high school. It contains a class photo that was taken in 1985. Everyone in the photo shows up clear and distinct and great, except for the figure of one young lady whose features are fuzzy and blurred. 
The other kids in the photo claim that there was no girl standing there when the photo was taken, and nobody knows the identity of that young girl. Now that is spooky, right? This next place we're going to go to is Elizabeth V. Edwards School, and it's located in New Jersey. And uh, this school was named after the original teacher, and it was built in 1930. It was used as both an elementary and a high school until it was officially abandoned in 2004 due to financial issues. Of course, Elizabeth herself has been known to make appearances throughout the years. Thankfully, she is known to be a very pleasant and kind spirit. Her apparition has been seen by many, and astonishingly, this is what's just crazy, she's been seen in two different types of, of outfits. She's been seen wearing a floral printed dress with her hair on, you know, piled up on top of her head. And at other times, she's been seen wearing a plain shirt and khaki pants. So she is still fashion forward, friends. Other incidents witnessed within the school includes people hear lockers slam shut, lights turning on and off by themselves. And uh, there's been reports of 1940s era music playing throughout the school. And an unplugged phone was found ringing. A few more personal encounters took place when someone noticed that the lights were on in, this, in a section of the school. Okay, so when they went to turn the lights off, they found that there were no actual bulbs in the light sockets. <coughs> so that's, you know, a little bizarre. And lastly, this renovation worker... He was working during the night. He witnessed a door opening on its own, and he ran from the building. It frightened him. Later, he returned only to find that his ladder he had been using had been placed down an entirely different hallway. The identity of the spirit who does these things is unknown for sure, but one report mentions a custodian who died from a heart attack in the basement in the 1970s. So they kind of attribute some of the goings on to that custodian. Now this next place we're going to go to is California State University on Channel Islands. Now, this university itself is quite new. It opened its doors in 2002 and classes started that fall. Okay, but the building itself is quite old and it holds a lot of dark history. The original building was constructed in 1936 and it was opened as the Camarillo State Mental Hospital. So you know nothing good is going to come of that, right? Within a 10-year span, this hospital grew to well over 7,000 patients, more than what the building was supposed to house. By the 1970s, a lot of criticism became to surface as findings were showing their unethical ways of treatment. And by 1977, the hospital was officially shut down. And, you know, that happened to a lot of mental hospitals. Conditions were bleakly and, po and poor, and the treatment was bad, and they were overcrowded. Okay, so after 1977, this building was later purchased and remodeled and is now home to many college students with dreams of bigger and better futures, right? Unfortunately. And there's always an unfortunately. Even though the building was getting a fresh more ethical new start, the dark and tortured souls of those from the hospital never left. And with that comes many accounts from staff and students alike of their very own paranormal encounters. Some of the more common encounters recorded are of hearing um, ghostly children laughing, witnessing items disappear only to reappear in different locations, having random items thrown at them, seeing and hearing doors slamming shut and opening, um, phantom mist, smelling random odd smells that remind them of an old hospital, along with hearing sounds of scratching on the walls. And some of the spirits have even been spotted in random pictures that have been taken around the campus. Now, for all these occurrences here, wasn't enough to pique paranormal interest. 
There is also the ghost that resides within the building as well as tend to make their appearance known in places that are very disturbing and, well, sometimes awkward, okay? And what I'm talking about is the bathroom. And it's always freaky if you get a visit from a spirit in the bathroom, and particularly in the women's bathroom. There is an apparition of a man who likes to appear in the stall next to you. This is how the story goes. And you can even see his legs from under, the, you know, the partition there. And if you make an attempt to open the stall door to see who is there, he vanishes. Gone. There is also a ghost of a woman who resides near the bell tower who will ask you for directions to the chapel. But when you reply to her and tell her, she just disappears. Lastly, the ghost of the janitor still roams around the building and everyone knows it, it's the janitor. I guess that's what they say because he likes to jingle his keys to make his presence known. And I would imagine, you know, there's been some you know, lifelong um, janitors at some of these places. So maybe janitors at some of these places is going to be quite common, I think. Now, this next place we're going to go to is Old Milton Elementary School, and it's located in Alton, Illinois. Now, the school originally opened in 1904, and it remained in use until the elementary school closed in the 1980s and became a glass factory. Now, the glass factory, too, was abandoned, and rumors of ghosts began to circulate about the, the old school, especially when it hosted a haunted attraction. Um, Sci-Fi Channel's Ghost Hunters visited uh, Old Milton Elementary in 2010. Today, it is a business home to a popular coffee shop, okay? However, in the 1930s, a grisly event took place within the school that left a permanent paranormal mark that uh, the current workers still witness today. This is graphic. It's said that a janitor, we're talking about a janitor again, he raped and murdered a young girl by the name of Mary within the gym's locker room. Several weeks went by when finally driven by guilt of what he'd done, the janitor hanged himself from a beam in the school's hallway. Not long after these two horrific deaths, teachers and students both began to see and hear strange things throughout the school. The spirit of Mary was witnessed in one of the old school's offices. Other encounters include coming across what may say... Uh, People say is a hostile entity who gives people the feeling of unease and nervousness, along with seeing shadows and hearing odd sounds throughout the building, right? Needless to say, when the building changed owners, the events only continued, and they've just added to the reports with hearing of footsteps at night, someone or something, you know, uh, walking down the hallways, upstairs, having items disappear to reappear later, seeing, of course, the apparition of a young girl, and even witnessing, this is, this is freaky, witnessing um, typing on computer screens when a worker temporarily walks away. So can you imagine getting up from your desk and coming back and having some stuff typed out on your screen? <laughs> freaky. Now, some of the workers became so overwhelmed and distraught by all the activity at the building that they'd quit their jobs to get away from all the occurrences and the sightings. So I guess it's so haunted that it drives the workers away. The next place we're going to go to is Ohio State University, and that's located in Athens, Ohio. This university was constructed and opened in 1804. It is actually considered one of the most haunted campuses in the world and has even premiered on Fox's Scariest Places on Earth. <coughs> now, Will's... <coughs> Me. 
excuse me, everybody. Fit, come on. Wow. Anyways, there's a, a Athens, Ohio, and the Ohio State University, right? It premiered on Fox's Scariest Places on Earth. Now, Wilson's Hall is considered the most haunted place on this campus with its building allegedly sitting in the middle of a pentagram consisting of five surrounding cemeteries. Curiosity piqued most people's interest, of course, even some from reports from a um, nearby newspaper. Okay. So, hmm. <coughs> In the 1980s, they researched the history and the grounds, and they found that Wilson Hall was built on the exact location of the original site of a cemetery for the old Athens um, Mental Institution. <coughs> Room 420A in Wilson Hall. It's known for an extreme... Event of entities and hauntings. So much so that the university actually officially blocked the dorm wall for use, considering it inhabitable in the 1970s. This still remains this way today. They still have it blocked off. Before the room was secured off from use, it was um, once occupied by a female student who was studying astral projection. One day, as she was attempting her studies, a fellow roommate noticed that she began speaking in a foreign language. And just after a few moments after, after this occurred, she died a violent and gruesome death in front of everyone. Later, the room was occupied by other students who all reported uh, they had flying objects flying around the room and that would smash into the walls and into the doors and um, doors would open and close on their own. And some even claimed to have seen a female ghost wandering around. All of the accounts led to the university, you know, it led to them deciding to permanently close off room 428. Also, at this campus, there was once a building called the Ridges, also known as Athens Lunatic Asylum. There's always been horrific stories that surround old asylums, and needless to say, this one is no different. However, there is one particular story that does make the Ridge stand out from the others. In 1978, a patient named Margaret mysteriously disappeared. The story goes on to say that she was playing hide-and-seek with the nurses who became distracted with their patient. And, um, because they were tending to other patients, they became distracted, and they forgot to finish the game and find her. More than a month had passed before her body was actually found by a maintenance worker. And up until the day the building was demolished in 2013, an imprint of her clothes and hair remained visible on the floor where her body had been discovered. People would also witness seeing a dark shadow figure lurking out of the window where the body had been discovered. And with that, folks, we'll be right back after this short break. You are listening to Ghost Talk Radio on WBHM-DB. You are listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, the best in paranormal talk, only on Paranormal Experience Radio. Broadcasting live out of Birmingham, Alabama. Oh, come on. I'm Southern, but... Um, nope. That'll do. Hello. 
I am Kat Hobson, host of Paranormal Experience here on WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. I enjoy having guests from all areas of the paranormal, from ghosts to ufology to cryptids and beyond. You'll find some of the best researchers in their fields bringing you some great information. Join me on Wednesday nights from 8 to 10 p. Eastern here on WBHM Digital Broadcasting. Since 1948, Fate Magazine has brought you reports of the strange and unknown, all of them true. Fate Radio is carrying on that tradition, bringing you the unusual, macabre, strange, and bizarre. Join host Cat Hops Sunday nights from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern on WBHM Digital Broadcasting. Listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, the best in paranormal talk, only on Paranormal Experienced Radio, broadcasting live out of Birmingham, Alabama. Welcome back to Ghost Talk Radio with me as your host, Shelley Robertson. And tonight I'm discussing haunted schools and universities. We're visiting a bunch of different places. Um, I'd like to invite all my listening friends out there to join me in chat, either on Spreaker or at WBHM-DB.com, where you can, you know, join in on the conversation if you got a great story or something to add. Well, okay, so this next place we're going to go to is Fallsvale Elementary, And this now abandoned school, it resides in Forest Hills, California. Now, it was surrounded by a forest which is known to have tales of ghostly children who roamed about that uh, both the teachers and students witnessed, okay? Now, these apparitions were seen moving about and playing on the outskirts of the forest. And some were even known to interact with the children of the school, right? So, many say that these ghostly children were harmless, and most took the encounters in stride, not thinking twice when seen roaming about. However, and there's always a however or something, there is a darker, darker lore what these ghastly apparitions uh, might actually be. And um, they are most definitely not harmless nor friendly. In fact, they should be feared and one should keep their distance as far as away as absolutely possible from these ghostly children. Um, the Aizu is what they are called, and this is dark spirits, and they take the form of children to trick, you know, people, right? And it's said that these children, they have cherub-like features, but they also possess jagged teeth and large black eyes now legend continues to say that if you look into their eyes for too long it will place you into a trance light state paralyzing you at which point it is said that they suck the blood from your body what's even more horrifying is that the victims are said to be fully awake and conscious during the entire process um i don't know but that's pretty Pretty fetching to me. I'm not so sure that I'm buying that. I'd have to see that for my own eyes because that's like ghostly vampires or something. <laughs> not so sure I'm, I'm going to buy into that one, but you never know. Maybe we'll check it out. This next place we're going to go to, and of course everything surrounding this, you know, is haunted. When you start to talk about it, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, everything there is haunted. And this is... um. Gettysburg College, okay? And that's, you know, Pennsylvania. It was originally founded in 1832, which was prior to the Civil War. However, the hall was turned into a military hospital and morgue during this battle. So with all of that trauma, death, and despair, it's easy to say that it left its mark permanently on this property. In fact, in 2014... Gettysburg College was deemed to be the third most haunted college in America. 
the location of the military's makeshift hospital and morgue was Penn Hall. This area was described as being extremely gruesome with soldiers most often uh, completely conscious during their emergency room operations. Oh, that's terrifying. And this just so happens to be the area where several people have witnessed some intense paranormal experiences. There have been several accounts of where individuals would take the elevator in Penn Hall down to the basement, but when the doors opened, the scene that they were shown left them in shock and completely speechless. Before them stood the entire scene of the working hospital. Lights were on, nurses and soldiers were walking around tending to those in need, and they themselves were not noticed by them people. And the scene was playing out in front of them. It was like they were getting a glimpse of what had taken place within this basement from the tragic times past, right? Now, as they continued to stand there in shock and unable to move or speak, the elevator door shut and they come back to reality, right? Pressing the buttons to open the doors again and they were greeted with, you know, the virtually empty old basement of Penn Hall. Be the back to normal. Additional areas of the campus also has its fair share of hauntings as well. Stephen Hall, built in 1911, was originally used as a prep school for girls that would later enter into college, right? So at one point, only one female student was resident in the hall, and... When she retired to her room for the night, she began to hear footsteps walking up and down the hallway outside her dorm. She also began hearing bangings and footsteps above her as if somebody was walking around in in the room above her room. So, of course, she was scared. And she didn't investigate the noises until the next morning because she was frightened. And not surprising to her, she found nothing or anyone in the building And she was reassured by staff that she was, in fact, the only one in the locked-up building on that night. This particular hall is also well known for the Blue Boy. The story behind the Blue Boy says that one freezing night, a few of the female residents snuck an orphan boy into the dorm to help him stay warm, right? Unfortunately, the house mother paid an unexpected visit, so the girls shoved the orphan boy onto the third story window ledge right outside the window to hide him and after the house mother left they returned to the window to let him back in only to find that he was nowhere to be seen his whereabouts were never determined and he actually was never seen again alive that is and uh later the girls got a fright when the apparition of the orphan boy's blue face was seen pressing up against the window looking in at him His presence, along with the unexplainable strange noises, have startled many residents that have stayed within that dorm over the years. The um, Huber Hall at Gettysburg is also known for many of its own strange occurrences. Residents have uh, woke up to feeling immense pressure on their chest, like someone was sitting on them, but they could find nothing to explain the experience. Others have woke up to hearing someone uh, being drugged across the floor of the dorms. And others have reported hearing strange noises as they lay in bed. And when they wake up in the morning, they have found that all the stuff on their desks are thrown all around the room. Ghostly apparitions and shadows are also a common occurrence here. And that's <coughs> all over Gettysburg. <laughs> this next place we're going to go to is Nightmute High School. And that's located in Alaska. And the name of this school alone is kind of creepy. But what lurks within it, or rather should I say under it, it's fitting to its name, okay? The overall, overall story is uh, kind of sad being that involves the ghost of an unknown young girl that no one can identify nor even gave an ep- an explanation of what happened to her. Nobody knows anything about this girl. It started when the school discovered an ar- unmarked grave 
under classroom 106. And once this grave was discovered, the ghostly girl, she began to make her appearances known. She is said to be quite shy. She seems lonely and even sad. And, you know, she doesn't make her presence known too often. But when she does, witnesses have said she likes to flush the toilets, turn the lights off and on. And she's also been heard humming and seen playing with basketballs in the gym. So she is active basketball player, if you want to experience that. Um, this next place we're going to go to is um, a place called West Lake High School. And it's located in a town now known as Marblehead, Australia. However, the town's original name was much darker, and along with it was also a dark history. Hellmouth is what the town was once called, literally meaning the entrance to hell. It is believed the original name of the town was due to the belief of early settlers that the um, town was built over a portal for psychic energy, drawing such things of Uf as UFOs, okay? In fact... A recorded sighting was seen in 1966 and reported in a local newspaper. Now, moving on to the school itself, the reported sighting actually took place over the school and is considered to be the largest mass witnessed sighting of a UFO in Australian history. The morning of April 6th, an entire class of students and their teacher were outside when a gray saucer shaped craft began hovering over them. Luckily for them, the saucer, uh, it took off and it descended into a nearby field and it ended up not disturbing them, right? Nevertheless, it was a huge unforgettable event that the town of Hellmouth has never forgotten. Now, the name change of the town was to try to attract more tourism and to make it sound more appeasing to visit and live in. You know, never mind the sighting of UFOs. You know, they thought that changing the name would be better for the town, right? Now, we've got this um, other place called uh, Benham Schoolhouse, and it's located in Benham, Kentucky. And this school was built in 1926 to house kindergarten through 12th grade students until 1992. Now, the teachers' salaries were supplemented by International Harvester, so they were able to attract the best possible educators. Now, after 1961, the school continued, but only kindergarten through eighth grade students until its complete closing in 1992. And once it closed, construction began to renovate the school into the end that it's known now for today, right? Opening in 1994, the inn on uh, the uh, inn has a restaurant on site, and it's called the Dinner Bucket, and it's located in the area that was formerly the principal's office, secretary's office, nurse's office, teacher's lounge, you know, that type of area. In the current kitchen is where the home economics classroom was and later became the kitchen for the cafeteria. Now, up these front stairs, there's a small sitting room with a large chandelier. It's been there for as long as anyone can remember, and the room was used for art because it has really good lighting. Now, on the second floor, there were additional classrooms and the school's library. Now, some believe ghostly students are lingering to this very day. The inn is supposedly, it still has the lockers with notes and photos left behind by the students and in, in the hallway up there on that second floor. And there's class photos hanging on the walls up there. And witnesses have claimed to hear unexplained running footsteps, laughters, and door slam. Lights are also said to turn off and on by themselves, if you can believe that. 
Now I want to, you know, tell a little bit what's going on at the old Paulding Jail right quick as we're coming to the end of the show. Um, we are starting up. You know, since Ohio is opening up, we are uh, starting to open up more and more events. So we've got a couple public ghost hunts for this year up on the board. And we have two exciting weekend celebrity ghost hunting events on the board happening and coming up in February. I know it's a ways off, but we wanted to, you know, get it announced and get it out there. Give people a chance to, you know, mull over where they're going to go for the winter you know, what events? Um, Santiago Cirillo will be appearing at the jail. He's known in the paranormal world as the paranormal magnet. And he started numerous movies and shows, including The Walking Dead and the paranormal movie Rosalie. You can find out more info on these events and get tickets at 187pi.com. Get your tickets early because they are limited and... You know, tickets are already going. So if you wait too long, you're going to miss out. He's going to be at the jail first two weekends in February. Um, we are about to list all of our private investigation sessions that will be available for the remainder of the year. We don't have a lot of availability for privates on weekends. Um, there's, there's a few, but not that many. And you can find us on Facebook by searching 187PI or by visiting our website at 187pi.com for more info on private sessions or to grab a reservation. And, you know, I would uh, want to take a brief moment here to thank everyone for listening to tonight's live broadcast. Please remember, be kind and be positive. I also want to wish everyone a very, very enjoyable evening and have a happy weekend. Keep safe. Good night, friends. You are listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, the best in paranormal talk, only on Paranormal Experience Radio. Broadcasting live out of Birmingham, Alabama. 